Here we have a PyO3 embedded Python CLI tool here that uses Rust as the main framework to invoke Python. And you can see here that I have an embedded Python function that takes an input, a very simple input, that if the string matches Marco, it returns back Python. If it doesn't, it returns back no Python. So it's a pretty simple bit of code here, but it's wrapped up with Pi03. So that part is in some ways the straightforward part, but the next question that many people that are working in production environments may want to think about is, what are the next steps that make this a real world production tool? So the next step, in my opinion, for most interfaces is to start with a command line interface. And with the Rust language, there are many excellent command line tool frameworks. In fact, they allow you to do uh, very sophisticated things like binary deploy, which is one of my favorite ways to deploy a CLI since you don't have to tell anybody about how to package the tool. You just give them a binary and it allows you to execute. So this really, in a sense, takes over some of the limitations of Python, which is limited in the sense that it cannot do binary deploy. It's a scripting language that requires an interpreter. So in this scenario here, if I wrapped it up using a CLI framework, for example, I use clap, what happens is that I can actually pass in the input when I'm doing it in an interactive manner here and pass in the word Marco. What's nice then is that I can actually get this feedback loop. And this is a great way to develop since I'm leveraging the power of the cargo system with Rust, which is really one of the strengths of the language packaging. And it takes over some of the weaknesses of Python, which there are many competing packaging solutions. Now, the next step after getting the CLI interface would be also to think about what about testing your application? So it's very typical uh, to have some form of testing, both functional and also unit level testing. This is a good idea so that you can actually ensure that the business logic is appropriate. So even if Rust itself has amazing attributes of safety, you also wanna make sure that the business logic is correct. And that's why a functional test for a CLI tool is often a very good idea. Uh, also, though, once you've got those tests set up, you want to do this in an automated fashion so that every time you make a change, it tries to compile, lint, format, and if all those pass, then you could create the deliverable, and that would be the continuous delivery aspect of it, and the deliverable could be a binary uh, artifact that you give to other people. So this workflow, I think, is one of the more, um, I would say, recommended workflows for mixing Python and Rust is to you know, quickly put it into a CLI, test it out, then go ahead and write a test, and then finally automate the testing so that you can give an artifact to the other people you work with. Or if you're working at a startup or enterprise company that needs to deliver your product, you can quickly deliver an artifact. For example, in, let's say, GitHub, and those GitHub artifacts can then be delivered to any user or even packaged into, let's say, a package management system like RPM or Debian, and people can use your product.